delivery. When it comes to the delivery in your tutorials, I recommend to have a very good pace and to be very thorough. In other words, if you give a lesson that doesn't move fairly quickly and it stays in a single screen for a long period of time and you're coming up with ideas as you're looking at the image, chances are your students are going to have a very difficult time staying with you. So I do recommend to keep a very good pace throughout your entire lecture or your entire recording and to be as thorough as you can to try not to miss any detail even if you're moving fairly quickly. The main reason why this is this way is because students can pause your videos and they can watch them again. Basically, you are acknowledging that the medium can provide these type of experiences over and over again to your students without you having to repeat as it would happen in a regular classroom things over and over again. So that's why it is very important to be as thorough as you can, providing as much detail as you can while moving at a fairly good pace. And that would allow students to make a better use of your resource and to not necessarily have to sit through a very long presentation that could dissuade them from listening to you. The other way that I recommend to do your delivery, and I have already explained this in another part of these tutorials, is to make a good movement of your mouse. Because that mouse is going to establish where the cursor is located and you can really indicate different things in your screen and that would facilitate your ability to transfer meaning to your students to ask them to look for specific things just by moving their cursor around so that's how you direct the student's attention and you can signal once again as i did over here the area specifically where i would go and do certain things around this stadium in Mexico City. And finally, I would like to remind you that we all make mistakes. And normally the way that this happens in a classroom is that if we make a mistake, we normally catch it right after we said it and we say things again correcting for what we mistakenly said. And that happens also here. One of the things that I have recommended in the making of these tutorials is that you record and if at any moment you get stuck, you stop, you think about it again and you start again that phrase knowing that later on at the time of editing it's going to be extremely easy to go to the moment in which you said the thing that you said wrong and delete that chunk and keep the rest of your recording intact. So feel free to make mistakes and if the mistake is too big you can go ahead and re-record that part and then delete in the post-production process. There's something specific to be said about leaving mistakes when you are teaching software applications and from my experience this is very important because software applications do not happen in a straightforward fashion every time. It's quite the contrary software applications and the use of software applications go, go through a process of constant troubleshooting, um, constant problem solving in order to find out what the program can do for us. So if we make a mistake in the program, it's important for the student to know how to undo those mistakes in order to start things again. So when it comes to the teaching of software applications, I do recommend leaving mistakes and undoing them while students watch what it is that you did because chances are they will find themselves in the same situation at some point or another.